Hey, welcome to the Solid Face Professional Training. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to receive our alerts for our weekly training videos. We'll continue our lessons moving on to exercise 09. We're going to talk about the commands multiple lines, dimensions, dash lines, observations, and last but not least, tolerance. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride, so fasten your seat belts and let's go. First, we're going to open a new drawing, selecting multiple lines, right? As you can see, our drawing that is ready to go has two points of view, frontal and lateral. So let's draw only the shape of those two points of view so we can start our lesson. We're not drawing dash lines nor center lines for now, you see? From our frontal view, starting from its origin, we'll draw this geometry right here. If you pay attention, you'll see that I did the outline. However, I will not erase it. I will only make it invisible, like this. We'll set the line's height to 40, with 10 as a measure. Actually, it's a line that measures 40, right? So I'll select, select this line right here, habilitate, join, extend, and choose the thread from the far end. As you can see, you can extend it by selecting the line and clicking on it with the right button, and then choosing Join Extend. Then you just have to select the one on the far end. Come on, it was easy, right? Okay, moving on with our drawing. We're drawing the line that is part of the chamfer. For doing that, I'm selecting this line from the outline and clicking on it with the right button. Now choose the Offset option which will be applied only to the chosen line and not to the whole geometry, which is exactly what you want. Give it the direction you need, being it above or into the geometry, type its value, and select OK. We're doing it for both sides, all right? Guys, let me take a minute and remind you that you can ask us any questions about this video by leaving a comment below. If it's a bit hard and you're having some difficulty keeping up with us, take a breath, take a few steps back, and see where you got lost. If needed, you can pause this one and rewatch our older videos. It's okay to struggle sometimes when we're learning something new. Everyone on the same page? Right, so moving on, we're drawing the outline of our lateral view now, so I select the multiple lines command. I'll use the corner of our frontal line as our original point, and I'll give it a distance of 30, only to maintain a standard length of both views. It will be the same way we did before, but only applying it to our outline, without any dashed or center lines. Confirm the quotes and erase the line and quote used to give a distance between the views. We'll make the remaining quotes invisible, and I'll create a circle and chamfer of our drawing. I know, I know, sounds confusing, but you got this. I believe in your potential. Okay, so now we're going to draw our center and dash lines. First, I'm going to begin by the center line. Let's input it to both views from the drillings, and we transfer the center line from one perspective to another, just like this. Habilitating center line command will select the standard mode. Go to the circle on the first view and habilitate quadrant on OSNAP. Then we'll draw this line until the far end of the other view. Now we'll habilitate the line partial erase and select the line between the views. We'll erase this piece of string that is over the frontal line, and we're partially done. I know, I know, just a bit more, come on! We're doing the same thing for the frontal view. However, there is a bit of a twist. On this one, there will be another line partial erase, which will be applied to the middle line of the geometry. But what about the dash line, you might be asking yourself? Well, don't worry. We're going to draw a standard line to draw our dashed line, which will represent the drilling. Habilitate line, select quadrant on O snap of the circle, and draw the line through both views. Now we'll use line partial erase like this, so that this line is only visible on the projected view. I know, I know. Too much, right? Take your time. I'm here for you. I'll wait. Ready? To make those threads dashed, we'll select them, and clicking on the right button, we will choose Edit Attribute. It will open a configuration box where we can change anything we want. We can change their lines, their thickness, image, whatever. 
But right now, we're only choosing Dash, which contains a vast option of lines for you to choose. We're picking Dashed Line. In case the distance of the traces are too big or too small, we can go to Edit Attribute, Dash, and use the length to input its size. For this little one here, I input 3. After that, you only need to erase the lines that are on the frontal view. So we'll transfer it from the lateral view to the frontal view. And we're going to do the exact same thing we just did on the frontal view. When we finish drawing the lines, we're going to make the quotes visible again, erasing any of them that aren't necessary, and adding those that are missing. You see? Now that we've got the quote straight, we'll input the tolerance on some of them. For doing that, I promise it's easy. Open Configure, and it will allow us to input text, kinds of quotes, diameter, anything like that. Can you see that Tolerance has two fields? They are two positive ones, however. If you'd like to make them negative, just add a minus sign before the value. If they have the same value, either for more or less, you just need to fulfill them with equal value, and our software will automatically input plus or minus signs. On this exercise, the quote is 30, so we're adding 0.2 on one of the fields and minus 0.1 on the other. Click on OK and the tolerance is created. After they have their tolerance values, we're going to learn how to create observations. You see, this is a very easy thing, so I bet you can do it with no problems. Go to Text Plus Indicator, and if this tool is not showing, no need for panic. Go to General Scale, and it will be on the toolbox. On the menu, you'll be able to choose the text font, color, width, length, format, and how it will end. You can decide if it will be an arrow, a point, etc. In our case, our text indication will be this last option here. And in text, we will add to do when assembling. All right? Click OK, and then we'll need to indicate where we're going to add it. Let's habilitate nearest through OSnap and click on the circle, selecting where I want to add the text. We're almost done. Just a few steps more. Bear with me. To add symbols to the text, we'll need to open the command, go to Symbols, and click any symbol we want. Then it's only a matter of adding any text you want to. Click OK and position this indication. Last but not least, to alter this indication, like changing it from an arrow to a triangle, we just need to go to Terminator and Points and select the triangle option. And we're done! Come on, I told you, it was easy, right? Well guys, that's it for today. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to receive our alerts for our weekly training videos.